Who are some of the scammers with the most ridiculous lifestyles? Let's find out and get started with... Number four, Hush Puppy. Nigerian social media influencer Ramon Abbas, known as Ray Hush Puppy to his two million Instagram followers, was accused of operating several international online scams involving money laundering. Abbas grew up in a poor neighborhood in Nigeria called Lagos. His mom worked at the local market and his father was a taxi driver. Abbas started selling shoes and clothing out of the back of his car in Nigeria for some extra money. Eventually, he became successful enough to open a few stores throughout his town. But everyone in town knew that Ray was really making his money online through cybercrime. Locally, he was called a Yahoo boy, or someone who makes their money through internet scamming. While he claimed to make his money through the local fashion industry, Ray was laundering hundreds of millions of dollars. In 2014, Ray left Nigeria for Kuala Lumpur, where his hush puppy persona really started to take off. A while later, he moved to Dubai, where he posted photos of himself donning designer clothing in luxury cars or private jets. Some of the items that made Abbas's Instagram page included a Bentley Bentayga, Gucci t-shirts, and Richard Mill watch. He never failed to include an inspirational quote about his success in his Instagram captions. Back in Nigeria, Ray's wealth turned him into a celebrity. Photos circulated of him with famous Nigerian musicians and politicians. However, Nigerian news outlets began to speculate that Ray was a Yahoo boy. In one scheme in January 2019, Ray and his co-conspirator laundered $15 million that North Korean hackers stole from a bank in Malta and funneled the money to banks in Romania and Bulgaria. In another ruse, Ray and a partner attempted to steal $100 million from a Premier League football club by intercepting payments with fake emails. Abbas admitted to defrauding someone in Qatar out of a $15 million loan that would have been used to build a school. Over a period of 18 months, Ray laundered over $300 million and authorities began to notice. The FBI had their eye on Abbas since 2019. When one of his co-conspirators got caught, Ray knew he was in hot water. Based on Nigerian news articles, text conversations between Ray and his co-conspirator, plus his flashy social media page, the FBI garnered enough evidence to make an arrest. The Dubai police caught up to Abbas in June 2020. Police barged into his apartment and placed him under arrest. He was held at a federal detention center for months. Still, that didn't stop people from wanting to watch Ray's life. In fact, it garnered him even more fame. He gained an additional 300,000 followers after his arrest. Two days before, before, he uploaded a photo of himself with a white Rolls Royce. In April 2021, Ray pleaded guilty to conspiracy to engage in money laundering. The following November, a federal judge in California sentenced him to more than 11 years in prison plus $1.7 million in restitution for his victims for money laundering and internet fraud. It looks like this puppy was hushed for good. Number 3. Elizabeth Holmes Elizabeth Holmes made her fortune through a biotech startup called Theranos. The blood testing company claimed to use a special device that could detect diseases in blood samples faster than anyone else in the world. Investors and patients bought into Holmes' lies. It was later discovered that the devices did not actually work. Holmes has claimed that she truly believed in her mission and had scammed herself just as much as anyone. The prosecution countered that Holmes knowingly conducted business and raked in profits while knowing that her biotech company was a complete sham. Even during the trial, Holmes didn't cut corners on her life of luxury. Holmes lived with her partner, Billy Evans, a hospitality heir, living in the Green Gables in Silicon Valley. As one of the most expensive estates in the country, it's worth $135 million. The pair lived in a nine-bedroom home on a 74-acre property with four pools, a tennis court, flower and vegetable gardens, and reservoir. The estate was built in 1911 and is a well-known host 
hosting venue for politicians, royalty, and Silicon Valley celebrities. But that wasn't their only property. Holmes and Evans continued to rent their luxury apartment in San Francisco for 5,000 bucks per month, even after Theranos shut down in 2018. The apartment is located on the famous Lombard Street. Holmes was set on buying a Siberian Husky. She flew first class across the country, was chauffeured to a top-of-the-line breeder, and purchased a nine-week-old puppy that she named Balto. During work, she and Balto were often picked up by a private driver, sometimes with personal assistance and security guards in tow. Balto was allowed into the Theranos labs, which made scientists complain about potentially contaminated samples. There were frequent concerns over dog waste in a supposedly sterile facility. Vanity Fair reported that Holmes had two drivers, two security guards, and two assistants. She was driven everywhere and had an assistant on call 24-7. She also had a personal publicist who she paid $25,000 per month. But in the end, many of her employees just became dog walkers for Balto. Holmes frequently traveled via private jet. When the business started to face financial woes, she reluctantly agreed to downgrade to business class on commercial flights. The Theranos headquarters in Palo Alto cost $1 million per month in rental fees. When designing the facility, Holmes reportedly spent $100,000 on a single conference room table. One of the boardrooms had screens that descended from the ceiling. Holmes quickly had to sacrifice her bougie lifestyle after Theranos went bankrupt and she went on trial. Holmes was convicted in November of 2022 on four counts of criminal fraud and got 135 months in prison. Those prison linens are going to be a huge disappointment. Number two, Ruzia Ignatova. Ruzia Ignatova, known by some as the scammer of the century, gained her $4 billion in riches through a fake cryptocurrency called OneCoin, which she and her business partner claimed would put Bitcoin out of business. The Bulgarian businesswoman held infotainment events in which she showcased herself as a billionaire dripping in rare jewels and designer couture. And it didn't stop there. She threw birthday parties at the legendary Victoria and Albert Museum, complete with a performance from Tom Jones, exciting all the single ants that were in attendance. Ignatova also owned several properties in Sofia, Bulgaria, and Sozopol. She thought the scam would last forever. It didn't. Soon after her Ponzi scheme came into the spotlight in 2017, Ignatova vanished. She's been on the FBI's 10 most wanted list ever since. Ignatova owns a huge four-bedroom London penthouse on the Abbott's House apartment block in Kensington. Abbott's House Penthouse Limited is a well-known company with very little government oversight, which meant that Ignatova's name was kept out of public records and land registry deeds. The property boasts a private pool in the residence with a highly valued Andy Warhol painting she'd stuffed in a closet. Of all the things Ignatova claims to be, she does not claim to be an art connoisseur, but likely bought some art pieces in order to funnel her wealth into something tangible. A BBC reporter remembered meeting Ignatova in 2016 after she returned from a shopping trip. Her bodyguards lagged behind her with more than 20 shopping bags each. Each bag was full of designer items from brands like Jimmy Choo, Prada, and Calvin Klein. According to the BBC article, her apartment stored art worth nearly $600,000 from London's Halcyon Gallery. Some of the art featured included a print of Elizabeth Taylor, another Warhol called Red Lennon, and a print of Queen Bubblegum by Michael Mobius. Ignatova fled to her native Bulgaria and then to Dubai, where she lived on a private super yacht in the Mediterranean. The 145-foot-long super yacht can house 12 guests in six cabins, including one master bedroom, one VIP, three double, and two twin rooms. There is also a gym, sun deck jacuzzi, an underwater observation post on board the ship. In addition to her London penthouse and a multi-million dollar private residence in Dubai, she invested two and a half million dollars on the coast of Bulgaria in a town called Sozopal. Apparently, her new home includes a small private beach, a vineyard, a children's playground, and a large swimming pool. This is Ignatova's summer home. She also bought a three-story building next door to serve as her guest house. Police warned that Ignatova likely got plastic surgery to change her appearance and evade capture. But in January 2023, Ignatova unexpectedly came out of the woodwork to list her London property for sale. She put it up for sale with an asking price of $15.5 million, which she later reduced to $13.6 million. Even though Ignatova bought the property under a company name, a new law required her to come out of hiding and be named in full as the beneficiary of the company. The listing suggests that Ignatova Ignatova is still alive, even though her whereabouts are unknown. It makes it easier for authorities to freeze her assets and lure her out of hiding, so her victims can get some of the restitution they deserve. The U.S. government has already charged Ignatova with conspiracy to commit 
wire fraud, wire fraud, conspiracy to commit money fraud, conspiracy to commit securities fraud, and securities fraud. Ignatova is currently one of only 11 women to ever make the FBI's 10 most wanted list. The FBI is offering a $100,000 reward to anyone who can provide intel on Ignatova's location that may lead to her arrest. It's speculated that she probably traveled with a German passport to Athens, to the UAE, Germany, Russia, or even back to her native Bulgaria. Ignatova's business partner, Sebastian Greenwood, wasn't as successful in his escape. In July 2018, he was arrested in Koh Samui, Thailand. Ignatova's brother, Constantine, took over business operations, but was arrested in March 2019. At some point, spending your life evading the law is a prison in itself. Number one, Bill Omar Carrasquillo. On YouTube, Bill Omar Carrasquillo called himself Omi in a Hellcat, a business mogul who flaunted his wealth with diamond jewelry and luxury cars. He also ran his own clothing line and restaurant. Carrasquillo also showed off his luxury life on YouTube videos that garnered more than 1 million views each. The South Jersey YouTube personality made his money by stealing content from cable providers and selling it for a lower price online. With more than 800,000 YouTube subscribers, he had a robust clientele. From 2016 to 2019, Carrasquillo and his two associates opened fraudulent accounts with Comcast, DirecTV, and Verizon Fios and employed Chinese encoders to copyright the content and sell it to users via illegal streaming services for $15 per month. But it didn't last long. He was indicted for running a piracy scheme that earned him and his two business partners more than $30 million. Carrasquillo dropped out of school in 11th grade and was arrested for selling the good old stereotypical illegal substances people do for fun. By 2012, he was starting to get his life together and started selling DVDs and then reselling Amazon merchandise. He also created an app called Gears TV. After a year, Carrasquillo was a millionaire. Carrasquillo had more than a dozen luxury cars, including a Mercedes-Benz, Bentley, and a McLaren. He also had several properties nearby his native Philadelphia, including a mansion once owned by Phillies player Jimmy Rollins. Carrasquillo initially maintained his innocence and documented his struggle against the federal government on YouTube since May 2019. In one video called The FBI is Back, Carrasquillo videoed himself adorned in a diamond-encrusted pendant with his brand name on it and told his subscribers how the FBI seized more than 30 of his cars and millions of dollars from his bank account. Carrasquillo warned his subscribers that he could be indicted on charges including money laundering. He confessed to feeling kind of depressed about it. Even though much of his equipment was seized by the FBI, Carrasquillo said that he was running a legitimate business on the grounds that he paid for his cable boxes and streaming services. But that wasn't going to fly. Eventually, Carrasquillo admitted his involvement in the scam on a video he uploaded to his YouTube channel. He said a behind-the-scenes clip from Disney's Pixar encouraged him to admit his guilt because it showed some of the hard work that goes into making a film. It reminded him of the frustration he felt when people started knocking off his reloaded clothing brand. In another video, Carrasquillo pleaded with the government to not put him in jail. He promised that he wasn't a threat to society and would pay back however many millions of dollars he owed. He posted bail the same day he was arrested and promptly uploaded a video thanking his friends and fans for their support. Carrasquillo ultimately pleaded guilty to several charges including copyright infractions, wire fraud, money laundering, and tax evasion. Police seized a bank account with more than $5.2 million in addition to several cars including a 2018 Mercedes-Benz with $80,000 cash inside and a 2020 Bentley Continental with more than $20,000 cash inside. The indictment states that Carrasquillo and his associates must forfeit nearly $35 million in assets, including more than 50 cars and motorcycles, and several of his properties in Philadelphia. If convicted, Carrasquillo faces up to 514 years in prison. The case is ongoing as of February 2023, but it doesn't look good. Big Cable always gets their man. Click to watch one of these next videos. Let us know in the comments below what you'd rather do. Have $100 million right now, but only live 15 more years, or or live the life you have now.